All right. Hi, guys. How are you? I guess I'm going to make my face big. Oh, my gosh, that's big. Hi. Okay, so today we are going to be going over a lot of time management because I saw that is what I can't, I can't. I just, I can't do this whole big, hold on. All right, we're gonna make my face small again. I can't do it. Like all my pores and oof, it was just bad. So we're gonna be going over time management and kind of my tips, how I plan my day, um, how I plan my week and how I kind of manage my time my time doesn't manage me because I think a lot of us are struggling with like we've got full-time jobs or we've got you know kids or we've got life or we've got husbands or we've got all the things there she is um and we don't know how to manage it all and we're not planners we aren't type a people we're kind of just like go with the flow and so it's trying to figure out a happy median to owning your time and not have your time own you. So I'm going to be referencing, if you have, girl, stop apologizing already. I am gonna be re referencing um, one of the things she says to do in the book on um, excuse three, I don't have time. So if you guys want to bookmark that one for reference of what I'm gonna have you guys do, it's gonna be kind of like a call to action, um, do that. So. I am going to first go over kind of what I want you to do for a week. So we're going to say from tomorrow to Friday, I'm going to have you do this. And, um, and then I'm going to tell you how, what I do to stay on top of my time after you guys have this. So let me pull my notes up here real quick. Okay. And, and again, I, I want you guys to reference this as like, Time management is not a skill that we're born with. It's not something that, especially as entrepreneurs, like as new entrepreneurs, it's not something we've ever had to do. We've always had our time managed for us with work. We're told when we have to be there. We're told when we leave. We're told what we have to do while we're there. So there's no need in having time management because it's managed for you. But now it's kind of all up to you for the first time to kind of figure out how you're going to make this a priority on top of everything else. And so it's new and it's going to take some trial and error, but doing these steps is going to definitely help you into that realm. So the first thing I want you to do is we've all worked with like a nutritionist or not even a nutritionist, but we've all kept a food diary, I would assume, right? We kept a food diary where they say, okay, write down every single thing you've eaten for an entire week. If you ate the Cheeto from your kid's plate or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to have you do with your time. The best way to do this is get out your phone um, and every single thing that you do in the day as you do it, document it. So that's everything from if you snooze your alarm and don't wake up till an hour later, document it. If you end up sitting on the shitter for 45 minutes because you're scrolling Instagram or watching people's stories, document it. If you end up deciding to sit down and watch a TV, watch Walking Dead with your husband for an hour, document it. Every single thing you do, document it. I don't care what it is. If you're working on your business, document it. You should have every single hour accounted for. And this is going to be very eye-opening. At the end of the week, you're going to be like, holy shit. Like, you're going to see how much either time that you've had that you're like, well, I didn't even realize I spent that much time playing Candyland, or I didn't even realize I spent that much time, you know, scrolling social media. And it's really going to be an eye opener. I did this when I first started watching Girl Stop Apologizing, and I wasn't even managing my time very well. Um, then it was back in September. And I was like, dude, like I am being kind of frivolous with my time. So that is what I want you to do. It's going to be difficult at first to man, to chart all that, but getting your phone out and having the calendar app on your phone open or a piece of paper or your notes pad, if you want to get your notes pad out, but you just want to have everything in there. So then on Sunday, you're going to sit down and you're going to look at it. And you're going to sit there and say, okay, so where can I find the time, right? What, is, what did I spend time on that I really didn't need to spend time on? And you're going to easily be able to decipher that. 
okay, so I need, I didn't really need to sit on the toilet for 45 minutes watching Instagram stories. I really only needed to be on the toilet for like 10 minutes, like stuff like that. Um, don't, don't act like y'all don't do it because we all, we all do it. <laughs> when we could be sitting there sending invites, we're all sitting there scrolling social media or watching people's stories. Um, but it's going to be super, 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 super eye opening for you. So then once you do that, I want you to find five hours. That's it. It's a minimum of five hours a week that you should be putting on your business. And so Rachel calls it the five to strive, you know, like the five to thrive, but this is the five to strive. So those five hours need to be non freaking negotiable. Those need to be like a date that you would not break. She uses the example of Chris, Chris Hensworth. Like if Chris Hensworth wants to have lunch with you, are you going to like say, mm, no, I mean, I mean, I just rather sit here and just watch the walking dead. Like, no. You're going to go have lunch with Chris Hensworth because he's dreamy and you'd be wondering why he wanted to have lunch with you in the first place. So it's like the exact same thing. You don't, you can't break this promise with yourself. These five hours need to be the most intentional five hours of your day. And I say minimum because we all know that we can get a lot done in five hours, but if you're wanting to 10X this business, if you're wanting to really make this into something, it's gonna for sure take some more than five hours. But at the beginning, five is great, and you just need to find the places to put those. And five might sound intimidating, but don't get your panties in a wad because five hours is one hour a day, Monday through Friday. Or it is however many 30 minute increments. I mean, you can break that down as far as you want to, but those five hours need to be non freaking negotiables. They need to be a date with yourself that you will not break. And they need to be the most best five hours of your time. And I'm going to go in with my tips on how to make those five hours the best and most intentional, but that is what they need to be. And then you're going to plan your schedule weekly. We all plan our schedule out for a month where we're going to put our boot camps, how, when we're going to promote what, when we're going to do this, but it really, really life can change in an instant. And so it's really sitting down. I sit down every single Sunday night and plan my week out. Um, and I plan where my time's going to be on my business, where my time's going to be with my kids. But most of my days look the same now, but when I was working, they would all look a lot different. And those aren't written in stone. Those aren't in blood written, but that's to give you an idea of what your days are going to be like. And then I will kind of talk about how I do my nightly routine, but this is something that's really going to help you with adjusting to the schedule and knowing that you do have the time, because I'm sure you guys are all so overwhelmed. You're like, I'm moms, I'm teachers, I'm, you know, I'm a, a, a manager at a salon. Like I'm all the freaking things. And I'm really finding it hard to make this as a priority as the things I have to make a priority, right? Like those other things are, those other things are non-negotiables. You can't just like up and quit your job right now. Like you can't just tell your kids to like go, go get themselves something to eat, especially if like they're only three or four or five years old, right? Those things you can't just throw off the back burner. So the first thing that can easily go to the back burner is this business. But as a, these first thing that does not need to go to the back burner, because again, remember your why, remember why you did this. And then remember what would happen if you stay inconsistent with it. Um, I mean, those are like my biggest, biggest freaking things is all, it's the easiest thing, easiest thing to be put on the back burner. It's the easiest thing for you to say, I am so freaking overwhelmed right now that I am not doing this with this business. Like I just can't do it but that's when you don't need to. And that's where these five to strive are really going to come in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to share an example of, it's like a printout, um, and how I go about planning my day. And then I will show you my actual plan one from today. Um, and then I will go over my nightly routine. So let me go ahead and share the screen. And then I'm going to have this print out for you guys in the team page under the file section after this call. So this is an exactly what mine looks like. Well, not exactly, but it's pretty damn close. So here's how I do this. So every single Sunday, I will plan out my week 
with highlights. But I will go into each day and plan my day. And so you, I always start with what do I know is kind of like non-negotiable. And this is how I would do it when I worked full time too. So of course I would block out from nine to five. Well, really I would block out from eight to six because I was traveling. And so from eight to six, were work hours. I didn't have any, I, I couldn't work on the business. It was from eight to six was work hours. So I'd block that out, but I would leave one hour for lunch and I would plan what I did for lunch. So from eight to six, I already blocked those out. So whatever your work schedule is, maybe it changes. Go in the entire week and block off where you cannot work the business, which is of course while you're at work. Or you know, if you're a mom, when your child, you know your child's going to be awake and not napping, block those things off, the things you know are automatically going to happen in life, okay? Then I go and I write down my workout. Yes, I schedule my workout, just like you guys should. Every single morning at 5.30, I would do my workout, which now I do it at 6.30 because I'm doing my pre-workout meal. So it's whatever time you work out and you are committing to work out every single day because that is a non-negotiable with our business. Write that down. So you're going to plan. Okay, I've got my workout here. Then you need to write down when you're doing your personal development and your journaling or whatever your morning routine is. Um, so I personally write down at 5 a.m. or 4.30, 4.30 to 5, I do my journaling and personal development. And I'll write that in so I know that that's what I'm doing at that time. Y'all, I seriously have every single hour of my day planned out. And does it stick that way? Hail to the net. Like, we're moms. We've got life. Things happen. But at least you know that, okay, I know I didn't get this done in this hour. So I need to move it to be able to get it done somewhere else. So now you need to plan out when you're going to put that one hour or those 15 minutes or those 30 minute power pockets, whatever times that you're breaking up your business to be able to make it less overwhelming for you, you need to put those in your calendar because if they do not go in there, they will not happen because life's going to happen. Shit's going to happen. Things are going to hit the fan and that's going to be the first thing to go. So it has to go in the calendar. But for me, I, whenever I was working full time, I wasn't on the early morning boat just yet. So I knew every day at one o'clock I wrote, I did invites every single day at one o'clock on my lunch break. I ate lunch and I sent invites. So I wrote one o'clock invites every day in the evening time. I came home. I did my workout. So I got home at six, did my workout, ate dinner. So at eight o'clock, so eight to nine o'clock, I sat down at my desk and I worked and I scheduled that out. Nine o'clock, I would lay Riley down and put her to bed. And so from then, from 10 to 11, I would work again because I get, I wasn't waking up early at that time. That was back when I hated life and didn't want to wake up early. Um, Y'all, I haven't always been a morning person. Now people think I'm insane for waking up at 4.30 every morning. But I, and that's what I'm going to get to with knowing when you're your super alert hours are. So that's what, how I would plan my day. So I start with the non-negotiable blocked off time. So where's your time that you're at work? And then where's the one, one, at least one hour that you're giving to your family, meaning like you're cooking dinner and hanging out with your family or you're doing bedtime routine and then sitting down with the hubs for 30 minutes, whatever your one hour that you want to at least spend with your family. And I say at least because I feel like we all need at least two hours with our family every night. Um, where you're going to put that is a non-negotiable for you and your husband that you guys want to go to bed together every night or could you guys care less and you stay up an extra hour and work? It's just all depending on where your family is and what y'all's lifestyle looks like. But you need to schedule that time with your family because I take it, please take it from somebody who did not do that at the beginning. Me and Chris had a lot, a lot of tips. We had a lot of tiffs in the beginning because I did not prioritize my family as much as I did my business. Do I regret it? No, it's set me up for success and it's given me a great work ethic, but it took a lot of repairing on my family end. And now I make non-negotiable unplugged hours, which you'll see when I show you my schedule. So that is how I plan my week. Then every single night before I go to bed, 
I'm trying to pull this up. Um, every single night before I go to bed, I will sit here and I will get my planner out and I will do a brain dump of every single thing that I need to get done for the, um, every single thing that I need to get done for the week, literally, or not the week, the day. Sorry, I'm trying to find this so I can show you guys as I'm talking to you guys. Um, so like every single thing that I've got to get done for the day that I'll brain dump. So I will, I'm trying to, hold on one second. You guys know I can't multitask. It's just not ever works for me. Just trying to pull up a day. There we go. Okay, perfect. So every single thing that I need to do for that day, I will brain dump right there. So literally every single thing that I want to get done, I put my workout on there. I put my personal development on there. I put my journaling on there. I literally put taking out the chicken for dinner that night on there. Anything that needs to get done goes on that brain dump. And one that helps me be able to sleep better at night. Because I don't know about you guys, but I am like a freaking head rushing. Like I, when I lay down, I think of every single thing other than going to bed. Can anybody relate to that? Like they literally will lay down in bed and their mind will race on the 101 things they need to do. And this brain dump is so effective for that. And you need to do it right before you go to bed. So like, I don't say take it to bed, but right before you go lay down, have it done. So then you know, and you have a list that you can work from. And so I will brain dump everything and then I will star the most important things that needs to get done. Like 120%, like I am not going to bed unless these things are done. And usually there are my inviting, my connecting with my boot campers, my coaching, all the stuff that's non-negotiables. Um, and then I'll rank them in priorities. And I got this from Brendan Bush Brendan Brendan Bruchard or whatever. Um, and he's the creator of the high performance habits. He does that. He categorizes. So he does brain dumps and then he categorizes, um, in order of importance. So then you make sure you get the most important things done first and the last, the least important things done last, just in case they don't get done. But nine times out of 10, I won't go to bed until my brain dump, like my to-do list is all done. And so I'll do that right before I go to bed. And then I will look at my schedule that I created the week before the, that Sunday and see, okay, so I know what's going on tomorrow. Is anything changing that I didn't foresee? And then I'll go and adjust if I need to adjust. So I have my schedule completely um, done. And then of course, if shit comes up, shit comes up, but that's how I do it. So let me stop my share and I'm actually gonna share this. It's um, my planner. I don't know. One of these days I just opened my planner and found it. Okay. Can y'all see that? Okay. So here is my, here's an example of one of my days. This was, I think last week, Wednesday. So I, here's my to-do list. So I, you can see I did my workout journal, PD, book of wins and vision, coaching call to action. So that was a post that I wanted to do, um, post and sneak peek. I needed to post my sneak peek. Update coaches road to diamond, add PCB, all these things, dive deep into boot camp, go live and sneak peek, new day in the life on IG poll. So this was everything that I needed to get done. And I did those two things. I just didn't. And then I also write down who I need to follow up with oh, and stuff like that. Um, but here's my schedule. Again, I plug unplug two times a day. Now I unplug when I pick up Riley until two o'clock and then I unplug in the evening, the evening one changes, but this one never changes. This two out, this three hours with Riley is 120% non-negotiable all the time because I want that time with her. Um, and so that's where I start with. I start with my, of course, every single day, PD journal, book of wins in my workout. Then I have Riley. I've got to wake her up for school and feed her breakfast. So from 7.30 to 8, I can't do anything because I take her to school at 8, 8.30 and then I wake her up at 7.30. So that hour right there is accounted for. I can't do anything there. So then here's where I adjust things. I chose at nine o'clock, I was going to clear my inbox, you know, do other coaching 
activities. Here was a call that I had. I was going to invite right here. And this changes. It changes all the time. But at least I have a blueprint of how I want my day to go. Um, live and sneak peek and stuff like that. And so um, God, I wish I had a digital plan back then so I could show you when I actually had a real, like a full-time job so you guys could see. But of course I didn't. And that I was so in freaking consistent back then with planners, but y'all, if anything I can tell you is plan your freaking day. Like it literally will change your life when you plan your day. Here's another one. So, and you can see that most of them are pretty much the same now, like workout, journal, personal development, clearing my inbox. I have non-negotiable ones that I do every single day. And so that's the ones you're going to start finding a routine and a rhythm that works for you. Because if you think about it, your days don't change that much unless you have a schedule, like a work schedule that changes with the, the wind. Like if you're in, you know, retail sales or if you're uh, like customer service or something like that, like that can always change. Um, but if you have like a standard nine to five, job you know how your day is going to be every single day uh, there's some random things here and there but for the most overall point you know how it's gonna be and so you're gonna find a rhythm that you like it's just going to take effort and that's what this whole thing does is it takes a lot of effort but it's not hard it doesn't it's not difficult it's just a little time-consuming what I like to do is pour myself a glass of wine on Sundays and literally make it fun. I will plan my days. I will make it exciting. I'll plan a date night with my husband. I will plan everything just so I know that I'm prioritizing not only my business, but my family as well. Because I want to look at my week and say, what is my main objective that I want to get this week? If you have not hit success club yet, that's your main objective. You know you need to find time to put your invites in there you know that that's non-negotiable right now. And so if you're sitting down watching TV or if you're sitting down, you know, playing Candyland or scrolling Instagram or watching Instagram stories and you have not hit success club yet and you have not got your invites yet, you are not being useful with your time. And I'm not saying that we're never supposed to watch TV with our husband again. I'm not saying these things, but I'm saying that we need to make sure that when we do sit down at night to watch TV with our husbands, or when we do sit down at night to relax and, you know, unwind and unplug with them, that we've gotten our non-negotiables done. And so if that goes into my next thing is, is like, you need to know what kind of person you are. Are you the type of person that can get your most efficient with your like work when you're most alert in the morning, or are you most alert and most productive and creative at night? Because if you are sitting here, if you're gonna to try to force yourself to do these things in the morning, and you know damn well that you're more of a night person that can focus better at night, that can be super intuitive at night, can be is super creative at night, then you're better off doing it at night because if you're doing it, at trying to do it in the morning, it's going to take you twice as long to get the same thing that it would take you half the time at night to do. So that's something with knowing with you. Are you more alert in the mornings or are you more alert at night? And so if once you know that, you can plan accordingly with your schedule. So if you're more alert at night, then you know you need to plan the things that don't take a lot of thinking power and a lot of creativeness in the morning. Like me, I am super, super, super alert around 10 o'clock to I would say about two o'clock 10 to 2 is my good my sweet area and so in the morning that's why I do my invites because those don't take a lot of you know creativeness and thinking and all that stuff I do my journaling my PD my workouts you know I get Riley up I will um I'll never clear my inbox first thing in the morning because I'm not alert enough to be able to have a good conversation with them and give them my all and so I will always do my inbox. The earliest is nine o'clock. I will dive into my inbox and that's like the earliest. I usually do it around 10. Um, and that's when I'm the most alert and being able to help them the most. And so when you know that about yourself, maybe you're the most alert and the most creative and the most helpful first thing in the morning. So then you can clear your inbox and do those things Brad eyed bushy-tailed at 5 a.m. It just depends on who you are and the way you 
you work with yourself. Um, and so those are the things that I do to be able to be successful with my time. And so now I'm going to kind of go over how I own my time and I don't let my time own me. And I, I, I preach this till I'm blue in the face. So you guys are probably going to be like, she's bringing this up again, but it's really what I do. I will. And I'm sitting here. I've got it right. I've got it open right here. Let me pull it here. I will pull up this handy dandy. Where did it go? Oh, crap. Here it is. So here's my black timer. And I don't know why it's called that, but it's, that's what it's called. It's what's on my, I just search timer on my Mac and this is what I is. So this is how I own my time and I am the most efficient because I look at that clock as like, I am beating the clock and I want, I like little competitions with myself. And so like my goal is to do an extra invite than I did the other day with the exact same amount of time. And so when I send invites, I break it up because sending way too many at one time just overwhelms me and I get really bored and I don't want that to go over on my messages. So I do two 30 minute sessions with my invites. So I will set my, my stopwatch. Well, it's not letting me click it right now, but I will set my stopwatch for 30 minutes and I'll hit start from that 30 minutes. I will not look at an Instagram story. I will not check my inbox. If a message comes in as I'm sending my invites, I will not check it. My one and only focus. If somebody responds the second I send that message, I will not respond back. I am only sending messages. I have one intention because this is where we mess up. We try to do too many things at once and then we end up doing nothing. Like that's basically how it works. We're like, all right, here's my stopwatch. I've got 30 minutes. I'm sending invites. I'm sending this. Ooh, this person responded. Let me go check what it said real quick. Or, ooh, I see my favorite person just updated her Instagram story. Let me check this real quick. These need to be the most intentional 30 minutes or 15 minutes or however much time you're allowing yourself of your entire freaking life. Like intentional. And that means you have to put your blinders on. And if that means turning off all your notifications, if that means literally putting a piece of paper at the top of your cell phone screen so you don't see when a notification comes in, do that. You've got to make that agreement with yourself that you're not checking anything. Those messages that come in will be there. An Instagram story that you love will be there. You've got to make these the most intentional. And so I do the same thing with my inbox. I set aside one hour each time to set, go dive through my inbox. And then when I'm done, I'm done. So when that timer goes off, I don't say, oh, I need to send one more message. When that stopwatch goes off, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. I'm moving on. And, and then I will set another one. Even when I'm diving into the boot camp to be able to like celebrate you guys and message back, I set stopwatches. I set them for every single thing in my life. Okay. Not in my life. Like I don't set them for like, you know, other stuff, but like business stuff, every single thing, Sarah, <laughs> every, her face is right next to mine. So I see every like movement she makes. Um, but every, or Chris. <laughs> and yeah, every single thing in my business I use a stopwatch for, and it's because it seriously makes you super lasered in, and you don't want the stopwatch where it's going to not be seen. You want to have it where you can look over and be like, okay, like, okay, I've got five more minutes. I need to hustle. Okay, I got six more minutes, or I've got three more minutes. I really need to hustle. All right, 60 seconds. Let's let's get hammer out as many as we can in these last 60 seconds. And so it really makes you work smarter, not harder. It all goes back to this thing of like, okay, so you know, if you've got your boyfriend or your husband says, all right, honey, we've got to leave in three hours to go to the concert. Guess how long it's going to take you to get ready? Three hours. You're going to like do a little bit of your hair. Then you're going to go make yourself a beverage. Then you're going to be like scrolling Instagram. Then you're going to go like do a little bit of your eye makeup. And then you're going to like go look at clothes and you're going to be doing all the things and it's going to take you 30 minutes. But if you like took a nap, overslept and your husband woke you up and said, honey, we've got 30 minutes to we've got to leave the house or we're going to be late to this Taylor Swift concert that you've been dying to go to. Guess how long it's going to take you to get ready for that concert. It's going to take you 29 minutes. Like you're going to have time to spare because you had a little less time and you did the exact same thing that it took you three hours to do but in 30 minutes because you had that deadline. 
that you knew that was not past. It's the exact same thing. If you know that you have to be at work at 9 a.m. and you overslept and slept until 8 and you know you have to get the kids up, you have to get the kids to school and all that, you are like super mom. You get all of that stuff done because you know that you have is a non-negotiable. You can't be late. And so this is the way that you have to run your business is always on a time crunch. That is how you get 20, 30, 40 hours of work done in 10, maybe 15 hours. It's owning your time, not letting your time own you. It's getting in the habit of working on little bits of time. And I'm not saying like you have to do five minutes every like random times. I'm saying like an hour or 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever time that you apply that yourself, you've got to make those non-negotiables. Like I'm making this 30 minutes going to be my best 30 minutes. And that's how I do it is timers, stopwatches, everything, literally everything, even personal development. I allow myself 30 minutes of personal development every single day. And I said a, cause if, if we get like, you have to think if we get in like a good book, like Rachel Hollis is on a spiel and we're listening to the audible, we will be like honed in on that forever and not realize how much time goes off. But the second that stopwatch goes off, you're like, Oh, I got to move on. I've got to go to the next thing. I'm going to be behind the rest of the day. It's one thing to schedule these times out on your planner or on that sheet that I'm about to provide you. But guess what? That is going to be put away. That is not a constant reminder every single day that you have to get these things done in this allowed time because it's, eh, it's just on the paper. There's no buzzer. There's no like thing telling me like this has to get done at this time. But if you have that stopwatch there, that's telling you that it has to get done and you have to train your mind to say that this is the time allowed. I'm not allowed any more time. This isn't me and I set the timer. I go get myself a glass of water. Then I go like check for the mail. Oh, the UPS driver came by. Are they bringing my Amazon order that I've been, I've been like eyeing for weeks, like waiting on. Oh wait, I'm hungry now. I need a sandwich. That's not what this is about. That is 30 minutes that you're sitting your ass in the chair and not moving, not talking, not with your husband, not anything like, and this is a good communication with your spouse saying, all right, honey, so this is what my, my calendar looks like for the week. I've picked these time for my intentional work times. Do they work with your schedule to where you can watch the baby? And if he says, um, well, this one does, but this one doesn't, that's where you guys work together and you have that communication so that he knows, oh wait, honey, didn't you say at nine o'clock that you had a team call? Why are you sitting here watching The Bachelor right now? Like, help hold you guys accountable, you know? And so having your spouse in on this with you is a big game changer. Take it from somebody who did not for a very long time and argued with it a very long time. Have your spouse involved. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all that I had for y'all. I'm going to open up because I went over a lot of information. Any questions or any tips that you guys or any things that you guys might be struggling with on top of that? Thank you for going over this though, because this is like the number one thing I'm struggling with right now. So. Yeah, because you have different schedule. Like your schedule is never the same, is it? Never. Do you usually know what it is for like the week or at least or two weeks? Yeah, I make the schedule, so I always know like a month out, like what it is. And oh, it that's big that you know a month out. Yeah. Cause you can go in that month and block off all your work hours. So that yeah. is one less step you have to do weekly. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you feel like you're struggling with it the most? I think because like you said, I think I'm trying so hard to be, to get stuff done in the morning and I'm just not as productive. And then I'm going to bed a lot earlier so that I can wake up in the morning, but I'm just not as productive and I'm having a hard time knowing that I'm a night owl and I'm just trying to like fight my instincts, you know, like fight how I was born as a night person. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like if you know that you're more productive at night, that you get more things done at night and that you yourself can force yourself to get those things done at night. 
Like you're not going to have shit come up and then not do it. Like you've got to make that decision for yourself to be like, all right, I know I'm more creative at night and I know that this is where I can be most productive, but I've also got to make it to where no matter what happens during the day, because we know how much crap can come up during the day that no matter what an employee gets pisses me off. My boss pisses me off. You know, like my mom calls me bitching about so-and-so like whatever's going on that you are still creating these hours at night sacred. The only reason I like to in the morning because not much can piss me off first thing in the morning when nobody's awake. So I don't ever have excuses, but if that is not what does not work for you, there's no reason to force yourself to do that. You can do your workout in the morning. You can do your personal development. You can do all the things that don't take you being as creative and as productive. So then at night, when you get home from work, you can, you know, spend a little bit of time doing, you can spend a little bit of time doing whatever. And then you sit down from, you know, maybe eight to 10 and those are your work hours or nine to 10 or whatever you decide for you. But if that's what works best for you, don't force yourself to do something. And then it takes you three times as long and you're miserable the whole time. Cause then you're just going to dread the business. You're not going to want to do it. No. You've got to make it fun for you. That's why I bought the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> I even set a timer for trampoline dance parties every single hour while Riley's at school, every single, those three hours, five minutes an hour. I stand on my trampoline and I play some Beyonce or some T Swift and I have trampoline dance parties. And I ain't even proud. You've got to make it fun. Like this, this business is way too freaking amazing to not make it fun. If you're getting bored by the monotony of invites, start voice memoing them. There's nothing more fun than voice memoing invites because like you can't help but smile when you do it, or at least I can't. And like the more you do it, the more, or like, you just got to find ways to freshen it up. And that's what's going to help you with not getting burnt out. But you've got to get a hold of your schedule. Like that's like the biggest thing with working full time and with this business is this is the first thing to get put on the back burner, regardless of anything, because it's not the thing that you're forced to do. Like we, we're forced to show up at work. We're forced to deal with our kids. We're forced to deal with our, our friends and our family and whatever. But this business is the one thing that we're not forced to do. So you have to make it a non-negotiable for yourself. I have a question, but it doesn't really relate to this. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I know. I've just been thinking about it in a sense because like, I feel like a lot of this stuff, like, you just learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Like that's really just how this business works. 120%. But like, what do you, okay. So like when you earn your rank, what is it that keeps you there? PV? The or active coaches. So like when you earn Emerald, as long as everyone continues to order. Yeah. As long as you have one active coach on your left and one active coach on your right, you're, you're Emerald. The same thing with Diamond, as long as you have eight coaches under you and then an Emerald and an Emerald, you're Diamond. Like that's, they all have to be active. It's not like, they, it's just active coaches under you. Okay, well. so then Success Club is what is based off of selling challenge packs. Exactly. Yes. New recruits and selling challenge packs. That shows that you're adding to your team, which is one going to help you maintain rank and one that's showing you that you're growing. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, that's the difference. So, and Shaco falls under PV under active coaches, correct? Yeah. So like if you sell just Shakeology? No. Like if active, like when active. Oh yeah. That goes under PV, which you're going to get cycle bonus. So meaning like every single time they order, it goes under your volume. Let me show you real quick. It's okay. okay. This can work. It's okay. Um, why does this do this? Coach office. The easiest way is for me to show you because I get, I get confused. And I know you're a visual person like me, so. I am. I like to see everything. Huh? I like to see everything. That's me too. That's why I do PowerPoints and it takes me multiple times as long. Okay. So 
when they order Shakeology, so you see here's volume, right? Uh -huh. And every single time they order Shakeology, it okay. goes under the volume. So like here, like I clicked on this person, this person ordered Shakeology. Well, that was the wrong one I clicked. Let's click this one. Um, so like here's Christopher Griffith. He okay. got me 82 volume points. That means somebody ordered Shakeology. Um, Alicia Hen, 90 volume points. She ordered Shakeology. Shakeology is 90 volume points. And so every single 91 you see is where they ordered Shakeology. That's what helps you cycle. Got it. And that's how you find it. Yeah. And people can order just Shakeology from you, correct? Yeah. So if they order Shakeology on Home Direct, it's two success code points also. Because I have a lot of people that are reaching out, but how do you do it? You just you just share a cart with Shakeology. So they don't have to buy a challenge pack or anything. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to buy a membership, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Got yeah, it. they can just get Shakeology on Home Direct. Got it. Okay. That was it. Allie, do you invite on Instagram on your phone or computer? I invite on my phone. I just find it's easier to like copy and paste or voice memo or whatever comes up. So like usually I've got like nothing on my computer and I just do it on my phone. Oh, inviting is one of the only things I do on my phone. I answer messages on Instagram and I do follow-ups on Instagram on my computer, but invites, I do it on my phone. It's just easier for me to like copy and paste on my phone and to like voice memo if I feel like voice memoing. Um, does anybody else have anything? Um, I was just going to say thank you for sharing that time thing because I feel like that's, I didn't even like realize how much I was struggling with it until you just kind of said what you just said about just like being intentional like I would be inviting but then as soon as someone would respond I would like start having a conversation with them that I would stop inviting or like I was like talking to like five different people at once and then I'm like wait who am I talking to and then it's like all of a sudden Ava needs me and then it's like oh shit I'm like in the middle of this conversation with these people and I'm like I'm too I'm too like hectic and it's hard, especially with you as like a stay at home mom and your, your boyfriend's gone all the time. Yeah. So, so I'm like, <laughs> and Ava doesn't take scheduled naps. You know, Ava doesn't, she doesn't do that. Like it's easy with the little right, one. She doesn't go to school or anything, but like, I think that's one thing like I'm excited for like when we move to Florida is like, I'm going to get myself like really situated, like have like a set routine and it'll be really nice. But for now I've just got to keep pushing through and yeah my thing is work. the things that you really need to be focused on i would schedule those around where the baby is sleeping yeah. um and ava you know with ava you can put on frozen and give her a snack and she'll be oh, pretty yeah. situated so yeah, that's yeah, where i would like, do that's where i would put my like when you're wanting to respond or when yeah. you're sending your invites is when you know, he's asleep, he's content, and Ava is good. Or that little bit of time that you have in the morning, which of course is not guaranteed, but nine times out of 10, he's laughed your tit anyways, that you can just yeah. send messages and stuff anyways. Right, right. And I do, so like, I have lately been like using this um, when he's nursing, like at lunchtime, I'll do a post then. Cause it's like, all right, I'm nursing. Like I got nothing else to do, but be on my phone. So I'll be sending invites. Then I do a post then I'll edit my photos. Like I try to do that versus like, there's been a couple mornings where I'm like, Oh, it's quiet. I'm like, I end up sitting down I'm on my phone and it's like, I could be doing other things while they're both sleeping mm -hmm. versus like editing my photos and like doing other like things. I mean that like I could be doing later. Yeah, exactly. And it's just all like figuring out and then talking with guy, you know, like saying, okay, guy, do you know what your schedule looks like? Okay. Are you going to be home during these times? Right. And I'm going to put this. It's, it's just communicating, but with his schedule, your schedule, it's you're, you're yeah. going to plan right. to not have it like as it's not going to be set in stone, but you're going right. to have your plan. So then you know, okay, I was able to do this at this time, check. I was able to do this at this time, check. Okay, this time I wasn't able to because Ava was acting cray-cray. Right. Know, 
everything should hit the fan. So I know I need to move this somewhere else. And then you can see where you need to move that to. And so at right. least you have it as an outline um, for you to be able to know that you still need to get everything done. But y'all, every single one of you guys should be doing brain dumps before you go to bed. Right. Every single one of y'all. Like literally, even if it's just like, oh, I've got this teaching assignment that I need to get done. Let me brain dump that. Because our minds race so much at night that it is so freaking easy to just like stay in bed thinking about every single thing that you need to get done. And then you're like, shit, like I need to remember this. And then you don't because it's not on your brain dump. Brain dumps. I'm telling you guys, they changed my life. Um, the other thing I wanted to say to the group is make sure we're doing PD. Schedule that. Schedule that. Cause I um was in the 530. I mean we have like a chat going and some people said they're not doing PD and that's so important. It's so so important. Like I feel like that's like 90% of what I'm doing is PD. Like I feel like I was Sarah and I had like a really good conversation this morning before we worked out and like just saying that like um, personal development is like that's that's been the game changer. It is. And that's the only thing that's gonna keep you around in this business. Yeah. I was not in personal development, I thought I was too good for personal development. I thought personal development were for people who were like fucked up in the head. And I was not fucked up in the head, even though I was very messed up in the head. Y'all, I cuss a lot. I'm sorry. But sorry. like, <laughs> but like, I thought, that's what I thought PD was. And then yeah. I read Girl, Wash Your Face and it changed everything for me. It changed my whole perspective because that book literally spoke to my soul. Every single freaking word. It was my every word, and Allie, every word every single word and you guys already know rachel hollis is my bitch and i'm gonna cry like a baby at summit. <laughs> if you think i'm not running up to that stage at summit you're wrong because i am okay but like exactly so you just gotta find a book that resonates with you and once you right. find one that touches your soul you're gonna be hooked on pd have i found another one that touches my soul like that one no honestly i haven't but I've found good ones that have bits and pieces that really resonate with me, but it's all about just making it fun and making it exciting. But y'all, that's the only thing that's going to keep you in this. When things get hard, when, when shit hits the fan, when life gets in the way, when people say no, PD is the only thing that's going to keep you going. Other than us, of course, but PD. Um, oh, sorry. No, oh, good. PD. I was also going to say that, um, last week I was like in a rut. I felt like I was like kind of being icky. I like in my inviting, like I was like, Oh, I feel like I'm just like trying to like get people to buy something. And I'm like, this is not, this is not what I'm getting from this. Yeah. And so I don't want to like be projecting, like I'm not in it to make money. I'm not like at this point, like if I make money, cool, great. Awesome. But like what this is doing for me and, and what I, and, and what I'm seeing it do for everybody else, like people, like all of you in this group, like this is something that can be shared. And like, I think that when you switch your mindset of not like, you're not trying to get successful points. You're not trying to make $50 from your challenge back. Like, I don't know. I just feel like the more you talk to people, like, and really just like genuinely, I, I feel like I've been having a lot more good conversations. You take the people, freaking like, pressure like, off the set. Yes. Yeah, you just got to take the pressure off the sale. You've got to take the pressure off the yes. Like, like I said, you've got to expect every single person to say no. And you've got to just be genuinely wanting to get to know them. Like right. if you're trying to force a conversation, like you think that top is really ugly, but you're going to tell them it's cute to try to talk a conversation with them. Like that's right. a fucked up thing to do. Like you don't want to do that. But if like, right. you're really like going up, like you're obsessed with somebody like, Oh my God, she's so pretty in public. You're, you're probably going to go up to somebody and say, oh my God, you are so freaking pretty. Or like, I am obsessed with your shirt. Like, where did you get it? I really want it. Like, it's just the same thing on social media. And so we've just got to take that pressure off. And that's exactly, she's, she's been under a lot of pressure because we're working on like a big, really big goal on holding rank and stuff like that. And so she found that she was letting that, you know, and, and I love that you're just kind of like not letting that do that anymore. And you're just coming from your heart, which is the best place to come from. Yeah. And now I'm getting like, and now I feel like, like people are genuinely interested. Like that's what, like, they're not like, oh, you're just trying to sell me something. Like, 
I was like, wow, like that's how, that sounds really great. I'm like, I'm talking about the community. I'm talking about how we're supportive. I'm talking about how we all motivate each other, how we all encourage each other when our days are hard. Like that's the stuff you should be talking about. Not like, yeah, like the super food shake is really And a little preview. She's going to be running the team call Monday and going over every single thing that she's done to hit diamond in her first 30 days to be able to be as successful as she has. So that's going to be one that you don't want to miss just a little teaser. I won't be there. I mean, I'll try to be there, but I'll probably be very intoxicated. I was going to say, you're going to be on a cruise. So <laughs> I'm going to try to hey, tune Lauren. in, but I can't guarantee hey, that I'm going to be completely welcome clean. to the craziness. But yeah. Um, does anybody have anything else that they need help with? Or was this valuable? Do you guys? Crazy cat. Oh, I saw a lot of Florida. Another color. Yeah. Lindsay does not live in Florida. She lives in Mississippi. <laughs> I missed your face, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of chat happening. Hold on. Oh my gosh, this is like the most the chat's ever gone off. Okay, hold on, hold on. Do you reach out to people on Facebook? Yes, I reach out to people on Facebook. Instagram everywhere. Um, I struggle more with Facebook, but I did at the beginning. Um, I don't anymore, but in the beginning, your whole warm markets on Facebook, that's where you need to be reaching out with the planner app wants the name of it and does it work on your iPhone. So they do have a good notes for iPhone. Um, but it doesn't work as efficiently. I wouldn't, if you only have an iPhone, I would do paper planner. Um, it's just, it's harder to do it on the iPhone or use your calendar app. Using your calendar app is a, a really good use source that's just like a planner. Somebody who will really live. I'll just move to Florida. No, I want to move to Florida too. Yeah, let everybody move to Florida. <laughs> um, yeah, how does everyone know. post with all the emojis and comments? Also, how do you continue to post to your story on Instagram? I post one and it will not let me post again to the, in the story side. Um, does anyone understand? I don't understand that one. Okay, I was, I just started using Instagram stories when I signed up. So like, I literally had no idea how to do anything. Um, I, I feel like it's changed so much since I've signed up. Yeah, um, okay, so. Oh, I can't. Like share you don't have music, Allie. JK, because like, oh wait, can I share my screen? Sarah, did you really need to bring that up? Like, I'm about to kick you off this call. <laughs> your, your face oh, well. turned around so quick. The only thing I can say to that is, um, what phone are you using, and what kind of phone? Like, what series? If you have an iPhone, or have you updated it? She's not showing her face, so I can't. Oh, the Note 8. Oh, we all iPhone people, I think. Oh, wait, except for Amanda. Amanda! Amanda! That's Amanda. Hi! This is where you come in. See, I knew eventually. Um, I don't know. I don't have any problems posting to my story. Is it the exact same um, way that you hit the camera up here? Yes. Or you can swipe over. And yeah, well, you can hit the camera up here. Well, shit. Yeah, there. And then you'll just like record it. Da -da -da -da. Hi. Yeah, that's what I tried to do. Um, I recorded it, but like when I hi. Sorry, I'm in my basement. No, Can you guys see me? It's good to see you. <laughs> um I posted videos, but it'll only post to my story once. So like if I try to post like a second video, it won't let me post it. So anyway, we can work offline, but Offline. I'm at work, obviously. <laughs> I'm talking. So you mean like you'll post it to your story and then yeah. it won't let you like, it won't let you put anything else on there. Yeah. Just the one video or like post. You multiple, and like you have multiple slides. Will you, um, can you, does, do Android <clears throat> screenshot? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, Allie. Gosh, we're not cavemen. Oh, no, yes. literally. I had that same question. I'm sitting here thinking the same. I was thing. like, can she screenshot it to me? But I was like, do Androids even... Why do people buy Androids? Like, they're so <laughs> I thought they were extinct. And then there's always that one. And so now, Amanda, you are the one Android in the new coach thread. Now I know, Sheree, <laughs> in my... Freaking April new coach thread is going to be the only Android. It, it always happens. There's always just one. Wait, Maddie. No, Maddie's not on here. Maddie's the one in my March one. She was the only Android. I always have one Android. I love it. Just, but yeah, screenshot that for me, girlfriend, and we'll work on that side lies, okay? Okay. Also, um, it could just be something with Instagram, not your phone personally. I mean, Allie has an iPhone and... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm We're not freaking it. talking about how I don't have music anymore. It's over. It's done with. I'm using it as an example. I'm sorry. And what do you mean by post with all the emojis? She's salty. So like when you're on, um, when you're posting a picture and you guys have the comments where you're like, oh, look at this in the background or like little things like that. How do you do that? Like on, like on a post? And stuff. Here, hold on. Oh, like, like in Facebook? No, on Instagram. When you're posting your story, yeah. how do you add the um, gifts on? Oh. On the top of like. I don't know how to describe it. Oh, you know what? You, you see to this do? like happy face? I don't have that. <laughs> you might need to update your app. Mm. Uh, and go back on the team page and watch the team call with Shannon Harvey. I'm telling you, game changer for Instagram stories. Or watch my recording because it's pretty good too. <laughs> um, you know you're the best. I already tell you this. <laughs> if you want to learn all the um cool ins and outs like layering and stuff, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. you want to learn that stuff then. I you probably haven't even that. watched it, so you don't know how amazing it is. I haven't hey. watched it. I need to watch it. Allie? Yeah. I've just been like kind of teaching myself and like playing around with it, but like there's a like I don't I don't know how to do like a swipe up. Like I want that. You gotta have 10k. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll get there. <laughs> my <fault>. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> let me make sure we don't have anything else. Cause holy crap. It's 10 o'clock. That, that oh. was, oh, that was my question on the thing. How did you the, get people to like, Oh, Lauren, you are so sweet, but we're really psycho. Listen to me. What? I'm about to cry. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Lauren, just shut up. I'm muting her. Hi, Lauren. Girls. <laughs> I love seeing people's faces. Hello. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Hi Lauren. Girl. Okay. Um, let me see. Best group ever. Oh, I love you, Lindsay. Do people invite people on Facebook? Yes. Um, you're right now, since you're a brand new baby coach, which welcome. I'm pretty sure this is your first team call. Um, then yes, I reached out mostly on Facebook in the beginning because I didn't have really any Instagram followers or any Instagram people. Most of my friends and family were on Facebook. So I was posting all of my stuff. I was posting on Instagram on my Facebook feed, excuse me, um, and kind of double dipping that and then messaging people from Facebook. I literally added 25 girls today. Ah, that's so exciting. I'm so proud of you. Note eight. Yeah. There's the Android comment. I'm just kidding, Sheree. <laughs> All right, Sarah, did you have something else you wanted to say before I muted you? Yeah. I, I wanted to know how you, like, built your Instagram followers. So I built it a lot with an app called Captivate. Uh, or not at Captivate. I did it a lot with STEM Social. So STEM Social is, um, that's kind of like what Captivate does, but on a 10x thing. Um, it's $19.95 a month, and you pick the targeted accounts that you wanted them to follow, and they would do all the following and unfollowing for you. So that's how I built the majority of it. Now I use Captivate. Mm -hmm. But before that, 
I was just doing what I, I, I tell y'all to do, meaning go to like Chris Harrison's page or go to like the a, a boutique that you're obsessed with and go follow their followers. That's what I did before. That's I, what I'm doing on Captivate, but like I'll follow like a hundred and like ten follow back. That means you just need to find better, like more better targets. But that's about the average. Like I've followed, I think I've followed like seven or 800 so far. And I've only gotten like maybe 50 to 60 right now. I'm playing around with my targets and that's what it takes is just playing around with it and being, right. a, being alert with it. Um, there's this other thing, other website called jumper media that does it for you. Like they find the accounts for you. They find your people for you. They do all that for you, but it is a little bit more expensive. Um, but is that I would, really authentic. Like how do they really know? Who they, they, they have, questionnaires that you fill out. Yeah. So they, they have a, a, you have an account representative that you chat with. They go over like all the things you like, your interests, your, your five things, all that stuff. And they'll go find accounts that are targeted towards what you told them. So they just take the searching part out for you, but it's all just kind of playing around with it and finding like you're good. Once you find like, you're like, Oh my gosh, this person just like, I just got a hundred followers from this group. You know that you need to go back to that page and get more followers from that page. Right. Um, but more followers doesn't equal more business. So you just got to right. make sure that they're genuine in your people. But yeah, that's what I did. I did STEM social and Captivate now, but I did STEM Social mostly. Okay. Captivate's new for me because STEM Social was acting a hot mess. So I decided to do Captivate. Got it. All righty. Does anybody have anything else or any other questions before we call it a night? Y'all, I need to get these brows done like some fierce. Whew, I've been saying bad. that for a while, Allie. I have because I, I, I'm like, Ooh, you know what? Let me just save the money. Cause I know I need to get them done before the cruise and go do like all that before the cruise. Amanda, you need to bring a bunch of spa stuff to Indianapolis. Yeah. I love spa that. time. I have no skin routine whatsoever. Yeah. What happened with that new stuff? You